From the jungles of Vietnam to the deserts of Iraq, the U.S. government has seen its share of secrets. Secrets that, when revealed, shook the world. In this video, we'll dive deep into the stories of whistleblowers who risked everything to expose disturbing truths, war crimes, covert operations, and dark programs of torture. These individuals pierced the veil of secrecy, revealing the grim side of wars and operations the world wasn't meant to see. From the Vietnam War's classified atrocities to the torture programs of the CIA, their revelations are as unnerving as they are crucial. Let's uncover the truth that was never meant to surface. Chelsea Manning's story is one of the most unsettling whistleblower cases in modern history, revealing deeply disturbing details about U.S. military operations and diplomatic practices that were hidden from public view. Manning, a former U.S. Army intelligence analyst, exposed a trove of classified documents in 2010, sparking outrage and controversy over the actions of the U.S. government. Among the leaked materials were reports on military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan that shed light on civilian deaths, botched missions, and troubling diplomatic communications that painted a grim picture of American foreign policy. Manning's decision to leak the documents, coupled with the notorious collateral murder video, revealed unsettling truths about the human cost of war and the dark side of U.S. military power. Born Bradley Edward Manning in 1987, Chelsea Manning had a troubled childhood in Crescent, Oklahoma, and later struggled with issues related to gender identity. She joined the U.S. Army in 2007, and by 2009, she was deployed to Iraq as an intelligence analyst. It was there that Manning's disillusionment began. While stationed at forward operating base Hammer, she had access to sensitive intelligence databases that contained information about U.S. military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan as well as diplomatic communications between U.S. embassies and the State Department. The classified material that Manning encountered painted a starkly different picture from the official narratives being presented to the public. What Manning discovered was deeply troubling. She witnessed firsthand how the U.S. military engaged in operations that often resulted in the deaths of civilians, casualties that were downplayed or entirely ignored by official reports. Manning's most explosive leak, which would become known as collateral murder, was a video taken from a U.S. Army helicopter gunship in Baghdad in 2007. The footage showed U.S. forces attacking a group of individuals on the ground, killing at least 12 people, including two Reuters journalists. The soldiers in the helicopter can be heard laughing and making casual remarks as they open fire on the men below, mistaking cameras for weapons. Later in the video, when a van arrived to help the wounded, U.S. forces fired again, killing more people, including the driver and injuring two children. The video was both chilling and disturbing, offering a rare, unfiltered look at the brutal reality of war, one where the lines between combatants and civilians were often blurred with deadly consequences. The leak of collateral murder became one of the most infamous moments in the saga as it starkly contrasted the sanitized, controlled narrative that the U.S. military had been presenting to the world. The footage showed not just a tactical mistake, but a deep moral failure in how the war was being conducted. In addition to the collateral murder video, Manning leaked thousands of classified military and diplomatic documents. 
The Iraq and Afghanistan war logs revealed the horrifying extent of civilian casualties in both conflicts, many of which were either unreported or underreported. In Iraq alone, the documents exposed over 15,000 previously unreported civilian deaths. The logs also documented cases of abuse and torture by Iraqi forces, working in cooperation with the U.S. military, and incidents where American soldiers mistakenly killed civilians during combat operations or airstrikes. The Afghan war logs further painted a grim picture of the U.S. military's involvement in a drawn-out, seemingly unending conflict. The documents revealed that coalition forces frequently underreported civilian deaths and that high-level U.S. officials knew the war was unwinnable for years, but continued to push forward with the mission, leaving soldiers and civilians alike trapped in a cycle of violence. In addition to the war logs, Manning leaked a massive cache of diplomatic cables that exposed the inner workings of U.S. foreign policy. The cables provided candid and at times shocking assessments of foreign leaders, exposing corruption, espionage, and backroom deals that raised serious questions about American diplomacy. These cables uncovered the extent of U.S. surveillance on both enemies and allies, as well as embarrassing revelations about world leaders that strained international relations. For instance, the cables revealed that U.S. diplomats routinely spied on United Nations officials, including the Secretary General, and collected personal data on key foreign officials. The diplomatic cables also exposed the role of U.S. embassies in facilitating arms deals, propping up corrupt governments, and negotiating covert operations that undermined democratic movements around the world. The leaked cables revealed instances of the U.S. government supporting authoritarian regimes in exchange for strategic benefits, creating alliances that clashed with the ideals of democracy and human rights. Manning's leaks showed how, behind closed doors, American diplomacy was often ruthless and pragmatic, trading morality for political expediency. Manning began communicating with WikiLeaks, the anti-secrecy organization founded by Julian Assange in early 2010. Feeling morally compelled to expose what she saw as grave injustices and lies, she passed along the classified documents, believing the public had the right to know the truth about what was happening in Iraq, Afghanistan, and U.S. embassies around the world. Manning's leaks were the largest unauthorized release of classified information in U.S. history shaking the foundations of the government and military. In May 2010, Manning was arrested after she confided in former hacker Adrian Lamo about her actions. Lamo reported her to the FBI, and she was soon taken into custody and charged with multiple offenses under the Espionage Act. Manning faced up to life in prison for leaking the classified materials. She was held in solitary confinement under brutal conditions for nearly a year, which drew widespread criticism from human rights organizations. Manning's supporters argued that the U.S. government was treating her inhumanely in an effort to make an example of her and to deter other potential whistleblowers. In 2013, Manning was convicted on 17 of 22 charges, including espionage, theft of government property, and disseminating classified information. However, she was acquitted of the most serious charge, aiding the enemy, which could have resulted in a life sentence. Manning was sentenced to 35 years in prison, the longest sentence ever given for a whistleblower. 
Shortly after her sentencing, Manning came out as transgender, adopting the name Chelsea Elizabeth Manning. Even from prison, Manning remained a symbol of the ongoing debate over government secrecy, military power, and the role of whistleblowers in exposing state abuses. Her treatment in prison, particularly the denial of hormone therapy for her gender transition and the harsh conditions she endured, sparked further public outcry. Manning eventually won the right to receive gender-affirming care while incarcerated, marking a victory for transgender rights in the prison system. In January 2017, in the final days of his presidency, President Barack Obama commuted Manning's sentence, reducing it from 35 years to the seven years she had already served. While not a full pardon, the commutation allowed Manning to be released in May 2017. Obama's decision was controversial, praised by those who viewed Manning as a courageous whistleblower who exposed war crimes and condemned by those who saw her as a traitor who endangered U.S. national security. Daniel Ellsberg's leak of the Pentagon Papers in 1971 remains one of the most unnerving revelations of government deceit in U.S. history. A former military analyst and defense strategist, Ellsberg exposed the U.S. government's deeply troubling actions regarding the Vietnam War, providing undeniable proof that multiple administrations had systematically lied to the American public and Congress about the war's progress, scope, and true intentions. The Pentagon Papers, which spanned over 7,000 pages of classified documents, laid bare the horrifying reality that the U.S. government had knowingly escalated a war it privately believed was unwinnable, costing countless lives in the process. Ellsberg's decision to release these top-secret documents set off a political firestorm forever altering the relationship between the government, the media, and the American people. Ellsberg, born in 1931, was not always the whistleblower figure he would later become. He was deeply embedded in the establishment, working as a high-level military analyst for the Rand Corporation and serving in the U.S. Department of Defense during the 1960s. A former Marine officer and Harvard graduate, Ellsberg was involved in crafting U.S. policy on Vietnam, initially supporting the war effort. However, over time, as he gained access to more classified information and witnessed the disastrous effects of U.S. military intervention, his disillusionment with the war grew. The tipping point came when Ellsberg was assigned to work on a highly classified study commissioned by Defense Secretary Robert McNamara in 1967, what would later be known as the Pentagon Papers. The Pentagon Papers were a comprehensive, top-secret report that detailed the U.S. government's involvement in Vietnam from 1945 to 1967 spanning multiple presidencies from Harry Truman to Lyndon B. Johnson. The report, officially titled United States, Vietnam Relations, 1945 to 1967, a study prepared by the Department of Defense, revealed decades of deceit, manipulation, and outright lies. It showed that successive U.S. administrations had misrepresented the reasons for U.S. involvement in Vietnam, exaggerated the successes of military operations, and concealed the true costs of the war, all while privately acknowledging that the conflict was unwinnable. The papers revealed that the U.S. had been involved in covert actions, political interference, and military escalation long before the public was aware. What made the Pentagon Papers so disturbing 
was the way they demonstrated the government's deliberate decision to mislead the public. Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, and eventually Nixon had all justified the war as necessary to stop the spread of communism in Southeast Asia. But the papers revealed that the real motivations were often far more complex and self-serving, rooted in preserving U.S. credibility on the global stage and preventing the perceived domino effect of communist victories. Um, even more chilling was the acknowledgement behind closed doors that military leaders and policymakers knew early on that victory in Vietnam was unlikely. Yet rather than withdraw, they chose to escalate, sending more troops, increasing bombing campaigns, and deepening American involvement while keeping the American people in the dark. Ellsberg, who had first-hand knowledge of the report, was haunted by what he had read. The more he learned, the more appalled he became by the government's willingness to sacrifice lives for a war it knew was failing. By the late 1960s, as the war dragged on and the body count continued to rise, Ellsberg experienced a profound transformation. He felt a moral obligation to stop the deception and expose the truth, no matter the personal consequences. This decision was not made lightly. Ellsberg knew that leaking classified documents could result in a life sentence in prison for espionage. But the gravity of the situation outweighed the risks. In 1969, Ellsberg secretly began photocopying the Pentagon Papers, sneaking them out of his office page by page. He sought a platform to make the information public, initially turning to members of Congress. But when no one was willing to act, he approached the New York Times. In June 1971, the Times began publishing a series of front-page articles based on the documents. The revelations were explosive. The public was outraged as they learned of the government's betrayal, and the articles immediately thrust the Vietnam War and the U.S. government's credibility into the center of a national crisis. The Nixon administration, which was in power at the time, reacted swiftly and aggressively. Despite the fact that the Pentagon Papers primarily covered actions taken by previous administrations, President Richard Nixon feared that the leaks would undermine his authority and encourage further disclosure of classified material including details about his own conduct. The government quickly sought an injunction to stop the Times from publishing more articles, citing national security concerns. This marked the beginning of a dramatic legal battle over the First Amendment, pitting the government's desire for secrecy against the media's role in informing the public. While the Times was temporarily silenced, Ellsberg leaked the papers to other major newspapers, including the Washington Post, ensuring that the story continued to spread. The Nixon administration's efforts to suppress the leak culminated in a landmark Supreme Court case, New York Times Company v. United States, which ruled in favor of the press stating that the government had not met the burden of proof required to justify prior restraint. This decision was a major victory for freedom of the press, but it did not end Ellsberg's troubles. Shortly after the leak, Ellsberg was arrested and charged under the Espionage Act. Facing 12 felony counts, he could have been sentenced to 115 years in prison. However, the Nixon administration's efforts to discredit Ellsberg soon backfired. It was revealed that the White House had authorized illegal break-ins to Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office 
in an attempt to find damaging information about him. This covert operation, part of the wider pattern of illegal activities conducted by the Nixon administration, eventually contributed to the Watergate scandal, which would bring down Nixon's presidency. Due to these government misconducts, the charges against Ellsberg were dropped in 1973, and he was spared from prison. Ellsberg's leak of the Pentagon Papers had far-reaching consequences, both for the Vietnam War and for how Americans viewed their government. It exposed the depth of deception and manipulation by those in power, showing how far the U.S. government was willing to go to hide its failures and maintain control. The publication of the Pentagon Papers intensified public opposition to the Vietnam War and contributed to the growing distrust of the government that characterized the 1970s. The revelations also raised unsettling questions about the role of secrecy in a democracy and whether the public had the right to know the truth about decisions that affected their lives and their country's reputation on the global stage. The chilling reality uncovered by the Pentagon Papers was that the U.S. government, across multiple presidencies, had knowingly sacrificed tens of thousands of American soldiers and millions of Vietnamese lives for a war it knew, privately, could not be won. The papers showed that rather than admit defeat or withdraw, the government chose to perpetuate a lie, dragging the nation deeper into a quagmire of bloodshed and destruction. The documents laid bare the moral and strategic failures of the U.S. intervention in Vietnam and forever changed how Americans viewed their government's transparency and trustworthiness. John Kiriakou, a former CIA officer, became one of the most pivotal whistleblowers in the post-9-11 era when he publicly revealed the CIA's use of waterboarding and other brutal interrogation techniques on detainees during the War on Terror. His disclosure, made in 2007 during an interview with ABC News, was the first public confirmation from an insider that the CIA had employed waterboarding, a practice that simulates drowning, on prisoners. Kiriakou's revelations came at a time when the U.S. government was either downplaying or outright denying its involvement in such tactics, leading to widespread debates about the ethical and legal implications of torture in the fight against terrorism. Kiriakou, who had served as a counterterrorism officer, was directly involved in the capture of Abu Zubaida, a high-ranking Al-Qaeda operative, in 2002. Zubaida was one of the first detainees subjected to waterboarding by the CIA, a method Kiriakou would later describe as torture. When Kiriakou came forward with this information, he shattered the carefully maintained public narrative that the U.S. government was using enhanced interrogation techniques to extract information from terror suspects without crossing the line into torture. At that time, the Bush administration had repeatedly insisted that such methods were legal and necessary to prevent further attacks, framing them as harsh but not inhumane. Kiriakou's blunt admission directly contradicted this, forcing the country to confront the disturbing reality of how far its intelligence agencies had gone in the name of national security. Kiriakou revealed that waterboarding was used not only on Zubaida, but on other high-level detainees as well, and he noted that it was highly effective in extracting information quickly. However, despite its alleged effectiveness, Kiriakou condemned the technique, referring to it unequivocally as torture. 
His disclosures also brought attention to the CIA's broader program of secret detention facilities, so-called black sites, where suspected terrorists were held and subjected to various forms of abuse. The public exposure of these practices ignited fierce debates about the use of torture, the legality of the CIA's actions, and the moral implications of employing such techniques in the war on terror. The use of torture, particularly waterboarding, became a flashpoint for controversy. Torture, as defined under both U.S. and international law, is strictly prohibited. The Convention Against Torture, to which the U.S. is a signatory, bars the use of techniques like waterboarding. Kiriakou's confirmation that the CIA was engaging in such practices put significant pressure on both the Bush and Obama administrations to address the legality and accountability of these actions. His revelation also complicated the narrative the U.S. government had been presenting to its citizens and to the world that it was waging the war on terror with integrity operating within the bounds of international law. The fallout from Kiriakou's disclosures was swift. He was lauded by some as a hero who had the courage to speak out against government-sanctioned torture, while others saw him as a traitor who revealed sensitive information and jeopardized national security. However, the government's response to Kiriakou was particularly severe. In 2012, five years after he exposed the CIA's use of waterboarding, Kiriakou was charged under the Espionage Act, not for revealing the torture program, but for leaking the name of a covert CIA officer to a journalist. This charge was unrelated to the torture disclosures, but was instead tied to his sharing classified information with the media. Kiriakou pleaded guilty to the charge and was sentenced to 30 months in federal prison. His conviction was widely criticized by civil rights groups and whistleblower advocates who saw it as a clear example of the government's selective prosecution of whistleblowers. While Kiriakou was one of the few to be prosecuted, no CIA official or government leader involved in authorizing or overseeing the torture program faced any criminal charges. This disparity in accountability became a focal point for many who argued that Kiriakou was being punished for telling the truth, while those who orchestrated and condoned torture escaped justice entirely. Kiriakou's case highlighted the precarious position of whistleblowers within the intelligence community, where exposing wrongdoing often comes at a great personal cost. His conviction under the Espionage Act marked him as a criminal in the eyes of the government, but to many, he became a symbol of the need for greater transparency and accountability within the CIA and other intelligence agencies. The use of the Espionage Act to prosecute individuals like Kiriakou raised serious concerns about the limits of whistleblower protections in the U.S., particularly when national security is invoked as a reason to suppress information. The broader impact of Kiriakou's revelations cannot be overstated. His whistleblowing brought the issue of torture to the forefront of public debate and exposed the dark underbelly of the war on terror. It forced the U.S. government to confront uncomfortable truths about its conduct, leading to congressional investigations and eventually the release of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report on CIA torture in 2014. That report confirmed much of what Kiriakou had exposed years earlier, revealing the shocking extent of the CIA's use of torture and the ineffectiveness of many of the techniques employed. 
In the years following his release from prison, in 2015, Kiriaku has remained a vocal advocate for whistleblower protections and government accountability. His case continues to be a flashpoint in debates about how the U.S. handles individuals who expose government wrongdoing, particularly in the intelligence community. For many, John Kiriakou is a hero who sacrificed his freedom to reveal the truth about the CIA's use of torture. For others, his conviction under the Espionage Act serves as a cautionary tale about the risks whistleblowers face when they challenge powerful institutions. These whistleblowers didn't just challenge the government, they stood up against powerful systems, risking their careers, freedom, and even their lives. Their stories remind us that the truth often comes at a heavy price. As we reflect on their courage, we must also ask ourselves, what else remains hidden? History is shaped by those who dare to speak out, and their legacy continues to haunt the corridors of power. If you found this video insightful, make sure to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, remember to stay curious and always question the stories we're told.